Hello, I hope you're all well um, and I hope you're looking forward to the next instalment of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. When we left it, the Snow Queen had just met Edmund and had plied him with lots of enchanted Turkish delight and had asked him to bring um, his brothers and his sisters to her. Let's see whether he will. Oh, Edmund, you've got in too, she cried. I've been having lunch with dear Mr Tumnus and the White Witch has done nothing to him. So he thinks she can't have found out. The White Witch, said Edmund. Who's she? She is a perfectly horrible person, said Lucy. She calls herself the Queen of Narnia, though all the fawns and the nymphs and the animals, they hate her. She can turn people into stone and she has put an enchantment on Narnia so that it is always winter. When he heard that the lady he had made friends with was a dangerous witch, Edmund felt very uncomfortable. But he still wanted to use to, he still wanted to taste that Turkish delight more than anything else in the world. By this time they had walked a good way, then suddenly they felt coats around them instead of branches, and the next moment they were both standing outside the wardrobe in the empty bedroom. Come on, said Lucy, let's find the others. What a lot there is to tell them. But when Lucy told Peter and Susan that Edmund had been in Narnia too, he suddenly decided to do a very spiteful thing and said, Oh yes, Lucy and I have been playing, pretending that her story about the country and the wardrobe is true, just for fun, of course. There's nothing there, really. Poor Lucy gave Edmund one look and rushed out of the room. Now, sightseers often came to see the professor's interesting old house. The children usually kept out of their way, but one morning, a few days later, they just couldn't seem to avoid them. Here, let's hide in the wardrobe room, said Susan. But once inside, they heard voices at the door. Quick, said Peter, and flung open the wardrobe. And they all bundled inside, and they suddenly found themselves surrounded by snow-covered trees. Why, we've got into Lucy's wood, said Peter. He turned at once to her. I'm sorry for not believing in you, Lou. That's all right, she said. Let's go and see Mr Tumnus. He's the nice fawn I told you all about. So, each borrowing a fur coat, they set off. But at the fawn's cave, a terrible surprise awaited them. The door had been wrenched off its hinges and everything lay smashed on the floor. Nailed to the carpet was a note. It said that Mr Tumnus had been arrested for high treason against the Queen of Narnia. She isn't a real queen at all, cried Lucy. She's a horrible witch and all the wood people hate her. Oh, we must try and rescue him. Look, cried Susan suddenly, there's something amongst the trees. The whiskered furry face of a beaver peeked out at them. Are you the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve? It whispered, and to show it was a friend, the beaver took out the handkerchief Lucy had given Mr Tumnus. Poor fellow, he said, that if anything happened to him, I must meet you here, the beaver told them. Then it added, Aslan is on the move. Now, none of the children knew who Aslan was, but at his name, each of them felt something jump inside. Peter felt brave and adventurous. Susan felt as if beautiful music had just floated by and Lucy got the feeling you have at the beginning of summer but Edmund felt only mysterious horror. And what about Mr Tumnus, said Lucy, where is he? Shh, not here, said the beaver. I must bring you where we can have a real talk. So they all hurried along behind their new friend and presently came to a large frozen river. A dam had been built across it and on top of the dam was a little house. But Edmund also noticed two small hills in the distance and was sure that the White Witch's Palace lay between them. Mrs Beaver was waiting for them and in no time the children were seated around a table eating freshly caught fish and boiled potatoes with plenty of butter. And now, said Mr Beaver, when they had all finished eating, we can get to business. First of all, Mr Tumnus has been taken to the Queen's house and he's been turned into stone. There's nothing any of us can do on our own, but now that Aslan is on the move... Oh yes, they all cried. Tell us about Aslan. Aslan? Why, he's the king, said Mr Beaver. He's the great lion and the lord of the whole wood. But not often here, you understand. 
Now, word has reached us that he's come back to Narnia and you are to meet him tomorrow at the stone table. He'll settle the white witch all right. For there's an old saying that when Aslan returns and two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit in the four thrones at Car Paval, then it will be the end. Not only for the white witch's eternal winter, but of her life. That's why she wants to get you all to her castle, where she can turn you to stone and so rule Narnia forever. There was a moment of silence after Mr Beaver's last remark, and then Lucy suddenly said, Where's Edmund? Everyone rushed to the door and looked out. Snow was falling thickly and steadily, but Edmund was nowhere to be seen. He will have gone to the White Witch, said Beaver grimly. I thought he looked as if he was under her enchantment. We must go to the stone table at once before the witch catches us. There's not a moment to lose. Edmund was indeed making his way to the White Witch's house. After a long and bitterly cold walk through snowy ice drifts, he came to it at last. The iron gates stood wide open and he made his way cautiously through a courtyard filled with stone statues. Across the threshold lay a great wolf. It rose, the hair bristling along its back, and growled, Who's there? Uh, if you please, sir, said Edmund, trembling, I'm the boy that Her Majesty met in the wood the other day. The wolf vanished into the house and Edmund followed. How dare you come alone, cried the witch in a terrible voice. I, I, I've brought the others quite close, Your Majesty, stuttered Edmund. They're there with, 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 with Mr and Mrs Beaver. A cruel smile came across the witch's face until Edmund told her all he had heard before leaving the beaver's house. What? Aslan? cried the queen and clapped her hands. Instantly the dwarf appeared. Make ready our sledge, she ordered. I'm going to leave it there and tomorrow we'll find out why the Snow Queen is so angry that Aslan has returned to Narnia and maybe we'll meet Aslan himself. Bye-bye.